Let's talk about a universal flop involving some cats. No, I already did that one. Let's talk about this one. As someone who grew up watching a lot of cartoons, my first encounter with Josie and the Pussycats was the Hanna-Barbera show, which I imagine is where most people were introduced to them, despite them originating with the Archie comics. Was the show good? I don't remember watching it much, honestly, and this video isn't about the quality of that show anyway, so let's move on. This video talks about the early 2000s film. The movie was something I remember not being interested in when it came out, which was the case for many as the movie bombed. Reviews were also mixed, with some disliking it for not at all being like the cartoon they remembered. I even saw it listed by some as among the worst movies ever made. Now, after hearing from some that it's been unfairly treated, I figured I'd finally sit down and watch it from beginning to end. Turns out, we've been missing out on a pretty great comedy. No one thinks I should be here, that's totally what they're thinking. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it. So, as an adaptation, how is this like? Well, again, I don't remember watching the cartoon much, and I've never read the Archie comics, so I can only say it's got the band, they sing, it's got other characters from the previous material. I'm here because I was in the comic book. What? And the conspiracy stuff is kind of like the mysteries they would solve in the cartoons, at least based on what I know. So if that's enough for you, great. If not, I still think you should watch it. Just know it's not exactly the same thing as what you'd expect. The premise of this movie is that music corporations are evil, swooping in subtle messages in their music so teens will buy whatever merchandise they sell them. I want a Big Mac. What? Mel, you're a vegetarian. I know, but certainly I want one. The bands they hire are unaware of such things, so whenever any band wises up to what's going on, the corporation will get rid of them and replace them with a new flavor of the month band. Their latest group is the unknown Pussycats, who are renamed as Josie and the Pussycats as the corporation tries molding the band into a solo act they can control more easily, thus conquering the world. It's got a pretty standard plot, at least the friendship story arc in it is pretty standard, but what makes it really stand out is they go all in on the evil corporation stuff. This must be my lucky day. Some may call it dated, but I did like the idea of several businesses being in on the plan. Even having a whole show like Behind the Music exists as a way for the villains to cover up their crimes. In fact, when the movie opens, we see a band named The Juror, that's pretty clever, singing a song named Backdoor Lover, that's pretty childish. And as soon as they point out they've noticed strange phrases on their music, their agent and pilot abandon the plane, showing just how dedicated the bad guys are about their agenda. And if that wasn't clear enough, the movie doesn't even hold back on its punches. Aside from the dark humor, we do get to see just how far the conspiracy goes, with foreign countries utilizing the music and even the US itself funding the project, at least until they find out movies are a better way to go about it. We found that subliminal messages work much better in movies. Speaking of which, one of the running gags of the film is that we see a ton of product placement in the background, and I mean a lot. Some might call it hypocrisy, but it's honestly the joke. The director even stated that no companies paid them for advertising, so what we see was all intentional product placement for a joke on how even the movie is playing subliminal messaging despite its stance, and that's a kind of trolling I can stand for. That's better. I'm honestly surprised this movie got away with that much. I mean, you'd figure one of these brands would have done something to avoid being associated with a movie mocking the idea of companies taking advantage of people through conspiracy, but nope, this was all fine. Guess just because they weren't being paid for it, but still. Now, is the movie perfect? Eh, if there is one area I have to harp on, it's really the music itself. Perhaps it's a reflection of pop music at the time, which I'll admit never having been much of a fan of, but I can't really say I enjoyed any of the songs, to be clear. And I'm not insulting the talent of the leading women here. Not only were the actresses good in their role, but I can believe they each learned how to play their instruments well, because they definitely look like they got the skills. My problem with the songs is that none of them are really fun to listen to outside of the movie. Backdoor Lover is probably the closest one, but that's less about it being catchy, more that it's just funny to hear that as an actual song in this movie. It doesn't hurt the movie much considering there's a lot going for it beyond the music. I just wish it had that as well, since it is a movie centering on the business. But 
then again, the joke is that fads come and go because of subliminal messaging, so maybe it works better with not so good music. Just so we get why a lot of stuff has no staying power, but I doubt that was the intention of the filmmakers. Looking at it now, while the movie has since seen a much deserved reappraisal, I think we still got ways to go for this underrated gem. We definitely need a Blu ray update on it. More people should go out and see this great film. Some feel it was ahead of its time given the satire, and while I'd argue it's less ahead of its time, more that it's just still relevant to this day, I can't deny it's a smart comedy that you wouldn't expect from when it was released and given that it's an adaptation of Josie and the Pussycats it's definitely a surprise give it a watch you'll definitely get some joy out of it